Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Naval vessels face constant danger from aerial attacks, making air defense systems an essential part of their combat capability. These systems are engineered to detect, intercept, and neutralize incoming threats such as anti-ship missiles, aircraft, and unmanned aerial vehicles. Naval air defense technologies continuously advance to counter increasingly sophisticated aerial threats. Close-in weapon systems, or point defense systems, form a vital part of naval air defense, acting as the final barrier against incoming dangers, including missiles, aircraft, and small boats. Typically mounted on warship decks, CIWS provides last resort protection against attacks that breach the ship's outer defenses. A standard CIWS includes a high-velocity gun, like a Gatling gun, a radar system for detecting and tracking threats, and a laser tracker for precise targeting. CIWS operations are usually governed by a fire control system that integrates all components and automatically fires at incoming threats. The system collects data from radar and laser trackers to determine a threat's range, bearing, and speed. It then calculates a firing solution and directs the gun to engage. These systems undergo rigorous testing to ensure reliability, accuracy, and interoperability, covering environmental, functional, and operational assessments. During NATO's exercise Joint Warrior off Scotland, a simulated air assault against the Spanish warship Mendez Nunez triggered defensive weapons on both sides. The exercise involved over 40 warships and submarines from 14 NATO nations, alongside 70 aircraft. The objective was to test NATO forces' ability to detect, track, and neutralize simulated air threats, enhancing readiness, coordination, and interoperability crucial for effective air defense. NATO's Quick Reaction Training, known as Quick Reaction Alert, or Immediate Reaction Forces, is a cornerstone of the Alliance's collective defense. These exercises require rapid deployment of fighter jets to intercept unidentified or hostile aircraft approaching NATO airspace. The drills also activate air defense assets, including surface-to-air missiles and anti-aircraft artillery to counter potential threats.
The frequency of QRA exercises varies depending on threat levels and readiness requirements, but they are conducted regularly to maintain peak preparedness for NATO's defense commitments. Naval Electromagnetic Operations, or NEMO exercises, are multinational efforts designed to enhance readiness and cooperation in electronic warfare. These drills focus on improving the ability of navies to employ EW tactics, techniques, and procedures to counter threats and maintain maritime dominance. Participants practice jamming enemy radars and communications to disrupt adversaries while using ECM to evade and deceive hostile systems, preserving their own sensors and communications. Beyond technological focus, NEMO also evaluates and refines EW doctrine, TTPs, and capabilities across NATO navies. On aircraft carriers, 50 caliber machine guns serve as versatile weapons against a variety of threats. They help defend against small boat incursions, provide suppressive fire during amphibious operations, and act as a last resort defense against aircraft. Though less advanced than dedicated air defense systems, these guns can damage or disable helicopters and low-flying aircraft, forcing them to retreat or crash. The Rolling Airframe Missile, or RAM, is a lightweight, infrared-guided surface-to-air missile developed by Raytheon. It protects ships against aircraft, helicopters, and missiles. Powered by a solid fuel rocket, it has a range of up to 2.4 miles. Its seeker locks onto the heat signature of the target, guiding the missile to intercept and destroy it on impact. Naval formations emerged in the 17th century as ships grew in size and complexity, requiring coordinated maneuvering. In the 18th and 19th centuries, formations such as the column, circle, and wedge enhanced mobility and concentrated firepower. The 19th century introduction of steam power transformed naval operations giving rise to battle groups centered on aircraft carriers and their escorts. Today, navies employ varied formations to support sea control, power projection, and expeditionary missions. Notable formations include carrier strike groups, surface action groups, amphibious ready groups, and expeditionary strike groups. A carrier strike group, or CSG, represents the pinnacle of naval formations. It consists of an aircraft carrier, its air wing, and escort ships. The USS Carl Vinson, a Nimitz-class carrier, leads the Carl Vinson Carrier Strike Group. Equipped with missiles, guns, and up to 90 aircraft, 
It is supported by the Ticonderoga-class cruiser USS Lake Champlain and Arleigh Burke-class destroyers USS Waney Meyer and USS Michael Murphy, which defend the CSG from surface and submarine threats. Guided missile cruisers are large, heavily armed ships vital to modern naval operations, providing offensive and defensive capabilities. Equipped with advanced radars, sensors, and missile systems, they counter air, surface, and underwater threats, supporting carrier groups, amphibious operations, and independent missions worldwide. The USS Bunker Hill, a Ticonderoga-class cruiser, is often mistaken for a destroyer. Armed with SM-2 surface-to-air missiles, Tomahawk cruise missiles, and Harpoon anti-ship missiles, it can strike sea, air, and land targets. Its arsenal is complemented by naval guns, electronic warfare systems, and anti-submarine capabilities, making it a versatile combat vessel. In U.S. Navy operations, cruisers like the Bunker Hill often operate alongside destroyer squadrons, composed of one or more guided missile destroyers. These units screen and protect larger formations, detecting and neutralizing threats before they endanger high-value assets, ensuring power projection and sea control. Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines, such as the USS Henry M. Jackson, SSBN 730, are among the U.S. Navy's most powerful and strategically vital vessels. Nuclear-powered and designed for long, stealthy patrols, they are a key component of America's nuclear triad, ensuring a credible second-strike capability. Each Ohio-class submarine can carry up to 24 Trident 2D5 SLBMs, which may include multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, MIRVs, enabling a single submarine to strike multiple global targets. This makes them one of the most formidable deterrent forces in existence. Commissioned in 1984, USS Henry M. Jackson has completed numerous patrols and supported operations such as Desert Storm, Enduring Freedom, and Iraqi Freedom. Its combination of stealth, endurance, and firepower ensures it remains a cornerstone of U.S. national security and global stability. The United Kingdom Carrier Strike Group, led by HMS Queen Elizabeth, the UK's largest aircraft carrier, is a formidable naval formation. The CSG includes destroyers and frigates from the UK and Netherlands, USS the Sullivans, and 15 Farad's 35B Lightning IIs from Marine Fighter Attack Squadron 211 and the UK's 617 Squadron. Its destroyers and frigates are equipped with sonar and torpedoes to counter enemy submarines. Aircraft carriers the most powerful warships are vital for projecting global power and must be armed to defend against air, surface, and underwater threats. Comprehensive ship readiness training ensures both carrier and crew can respond to any danger.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.